Now let's look at this pickup bar, bar naught as it's known. Like I said, position minus one. First finger is on this D. That little sign before the note is a quaver rest. So you're going to count one, two, and three, and. One, two, and three, and you'll come in on the and three, and. So you'll start halfway through beat two on that quaver, which is a D on the push. And then you'll go to the button below, uh, keep pushing, get the note G, and then with that same button pull out, uh, you'll get the note A. So finger one, finger two, finger two. So one, two, and three, and. And like I said, no call all the way through that. So to count that in, you'll go one, two. And you're into your first complete bar where the A section starts. That's what the A in the box means there. And you can see that fancy sign, which is a repeat code, which will be coming back to you. It's called the Segno, S-E-G-N-O. It's an Italian word meaning sign. And you've also got a repeat code there, thick line, thin line, two dots. And we're still in this uh, position minus one. So we've just played. We're going to do this. Now it sounds a bit weird because we've got that triplet. It'll make more sense, as is often the case with bars of three. It'll make more sense when we get the next bar. So, um, so we've got B and G. Okay, so finger three falls nicely on the B. Finger two falls nicely on the G on the button above. And then we come over to the D row with the same finger. So finger two is used twice in a row. See, um, there's no way of avoiding that. It doesn't really matter. Um, but you're still technically in position minus one. And you're going to do this. Now you're going to play the E. This is the only place you can get this note on the melodeon generally. Uh, and it's, oh, for me, it's button four. If I say button four and you've got a third button start, then it's button three. It's always one less. Okay, so just subtract one from every number that I say. So E, finger two. Now first finger goes over onto the G row, still pulling to get the F sharp, and back to the E again on the D row. So the two E notes there have diamond heads because they're both on the D row. And it's a triplet, so you've got um, like that. And the bass for that is G bass, G chord, and then C bass note. It's not C chord. I think it sounds better if you do that. Bass note called bass note. Okay, sometimes I do that, and hopefully you'll see why. So let's play that. So the B coincides with the G bass, the G coincides with the G chord, and the first E in that triplet coincides with that C bass. 